So the main important thing, guys, when you're dealing with um, the main important thing when we're dealing with summation uh, notation is we have to remember again what does everything represent in summation notation. First of all, this is where we start. This is the number of terms that are going to be a part of the sum. And then this is your explicit formula. Now remember, our explicit formulas, we've only talked about two different explicit formulas, an arithmetic and a geometric. And you guys can see, since this one has raised to the power, this is the same as our explicit formula for a geometric sequence. So what I wrote to you guys before in a geometric sequence, a sub n equals a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1. That is the explicit formula for a geometric sequence. That was given to you guys two class periods ago. We did notes on geometric sequences. All right? So what I'm trying to say is that is the rule is in that format. So we know it's a geometric. But summation, well, they're asking us to find the sum. So therefore, we're talking about the sum of a series. So therefore, we go to our formula. So the sum of a series, of a finite series, right? Because it has a start and it has an end. We're only doing the series. We're only adding the sum for seven terms. So s of n equals a sub 1 times 1 minus r raised to the n divided by 1 minus r. Now to find the sum, we've got to figure out all the information. So the first thing we need to figure out is what a sub 1 is. Do you guys remember when I gave you a, a sequence, an explicit formula, and said, hey, find the first five terms? What did we do to find the first five terms? You just plugged. How did you find the first term? You plugged in 1 in for n. Then you did 2 in for n. So guys, what is the formula here? That's the rule. So you say a sub n equals 3 times negative 2 times n minus 1. So if I want to find the first term, what do I do? Plug 1 in for n. So you do a sub 1 equals 3 times negative 2 times 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 2 raised to the 0 power is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. So we got our first number. We already know 1 is there. Now, r. Last example, how do we find r? Last example, we were, given a ser we were given a list of numbers, right? So to find r, what we simply did is we subtracted, right? Or I'm sorry, not subtracted, we divided. a sub 2 over a sub 1. In this case, we're not given the first five terms, are we? Now, you could find two terms and then divide them. Right? You could find a sub 2 and then divide them. But also, guys, look at the formula. Where is r located in the formula? r is your base of your exponent, right? So what is the base of my exponent here? Negative 2. Negative 2. Right here. So I'll have negative 2 raised to the n. What does n equal? It's right seven. there. Seven. No. N equals one, as you remember, this is where you're going to start. This is how many terms. Oops, I'm sorry. There's not supposed to be n equals seven. N equals one is our start. This is how many terms of n we're going to be using, which would be seven. Okay? Because we're trying to find the sum of how many numbers? Seven of them. That's what that represents. Because we're trying to find s of seven numbers. The, C, the series of seven terms. Yeah, you do. Seven goes in front. I plug. I know. I, I don't know. Any, there should, it's not n equals seven. You just put seven up there. I wrote that wrong. It shouldn't have been n equals seven. It's just seven, but it still represents n. Um, then you have one minus negative two, which is your r. So now what we're simply going to do now what we're simply going to do is go ahead and simplify this. So the main important thing guys is when you're doing this is you got to make sure you be very very careful with your order of operations. This is negative 2 raised to the 7th power, okay? So basically that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 and so on, all right? So if you do negative 2 raised to the 7th power, you're going to have a negative 128.
And then 1 minus a negative 2 is going to give you a 3. So therefore, I have 128. So 1 minus, uh, 1 minus, 1 minus negative 128 is going to give you a positive. So 1 plus 128 is 129. So 129 times 3 is 387. Divide by 3 is 129. Actually, you could say the 3's divide out. So therefore, you, um, we could have that it would be 129 would be your final sum. Okay. I'm getting really, really sick.